In this problem, we have to sketch the graph of this vector-valued function. So to do that, it might be easier to first write this in rectangular form. So this here is your x, and this here is your y. So we'll start by setting x equal to cosine theta, and then setting y equal to 8 sine theta. And whenever you have like a cosine and a sine, the idea is to solve for the trig function and then use an identity. So here we're good. We have x equals cosine theta. Over here we should divide by 8 to solve for the sine function. So we have y over 8 equals sine theta. So now what we do is we use the identity that says sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So sine squared will just be this y over 8 squared. So when you square the y, you're just going to get y squared. And then when you square the 8, you're going to get 64. Plus cosine squared, well that's just going to be x squared. And what we're going to do is we're going to write it over 1. And you'll see y in a minute. And this is equal to 1. So this is the graph of an ellipse. Recall if you have a plus sign here and these numbers on the bottom are different, it's an ellipse. In an ellipse, a is always the square root of the bigger number. So in this case, the bigger number is 64. So a is the square root of 64, so a is 8. b is going to be the square root of the smaller number, so b is 1. Again, in an ellipse, a is always the square root of the bigger number. So let's go ahead and graph this now. So because the bigger number is under the y, we go up and down by 8. If it was under the x, we would go left and right by 8. So the bigger number is under the y, so the major axis is vertical. So we go up and down by 8. So there's an 8 here, and there's an 8 here. So the center here is 0, 0. So from the center, we would go up and down by 8. Then we just go left and right by b. So I'll put this here, put this here. This will be 1 and negative 1. Then you connect the dots, and you make the shape of the ellipse. OK. So again, in an ellipse, a is the square root of the bigger number. Because the bigger number is under the y, we go up and down by a. If the bigger number was under the x, like if we had a 64 here instead of a 1, then we would go left and right by 8. All right, the last thing to do is the orientation. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So let me come over here. So basically, you can make a table like this, theta. And then here, I'll call this x. And here, we'll call this y. So this is our x. And this is our y right here. So we need to pick some values in increasing order. Let's pick nice numbers. How about 0? And how about pi over 2? So if you plug in 0 for cosine, we get cosine of 0, which is 1. Plug in 0 for sine, you get sine of 0, which is 0. So we're here. This is the first dot. This corresponds to theta equals 0. So when theta is 0, we have a vector that starts at the origin, and its terminal point is right here, and it's the yellow dot. When theta is pi over 2, we get the cosine of pi over 2, which is 0. Sine of pi over 2 is 1, so we get 8 times 1, so we get 8. So now we're up here. So this theta here, this corresponds to theta equals pi over 2. You might say, OK, so the orientation is um, counterclockwise. It is, but just to be safe, right? let's, let's do one more, right? because it is a circle. We've, we could have gone from here and all the way around clockwise. We didn't, but just in case, it never, never hurts to check. So pi. So cosine of pi is negative 1, sine of pi is 0, so we get 0. So now we're here. So this corresponds to theta equals pi. So you just always do it in increasing order. And then look, now you see the way, the direction, is this one. So there's the direction. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care.